Welcome everyone to Back Neck Bumps Part 2. In this video, we're going to be talking and actually showing you what to eat and what not to eat. If you have a food allergy, then this video is for you. As you've seen in my previous video, I showed you my head from the scarring of years and years of just basically having a, a, an unhealthy junk food diet. And over time, I found out that I was allergic to wheat and gluten specifically, and I had developed these coin-sized bald spots on the, the top of my, my, my scalp, and I was itching, and there was a lot of breakouts, and I didn't even know what was causing it until I realized that there was something wrong with my diet. I had at the time started juicing, and I had eliminated a lot of the unhealthy grains, and just by sheer accident, after tons of doctor's visits, after tons of injections, antibiotics, uh, topical treatments, expensive treatments, seeing four or five doctors, no doctor ever said to me, what are you eating? Upgrade your diet, change your diet. So I started this video, back neck bumps, and the response was, overwhelming it's the comments are coming in every day every week um, people are sharing their their trials their tribulations and their testimonials too they're they're seeing the change they're seeing their skin clear up and that's great and I've doing this video now because I've been getting a lot of questions in terms of what to eat what exactly is, is should your menu look like so this video I'm going to show you is just me going shopping and showing you exactly how I how I actually go through that process. Now, most people, I think, at the end of the day, are aware that not as for example, I use the example of not everyone is lactose intolerant. Uh, some of you can drink milk. Some people are allergic to peanuts, and this is a food allergy video. Um, but I think at the end of the day, you should always listen to your body. Listen to the feedback. I've, I've done a series of other videos about this. Listen to the feedback that your body is providing. So the feedback comes in the form of your, your skin. And that's what the Whisker channel is all about. But feedback can come from your nails. Feedback can come from your hair. Feedback can come from your sleep. Feedback can also come in the form of, of how you go to the bathroom. Um, you know, number one and number two, it's kind of important. Um, so there's many different ways to see, okay, how, what am I feeling? How am I feeling? And, and is the food I'm eating, is the lifestyle I'm living um, healthy? So this is a, a video that should be taken sort of holistically. Um, so yeah, it's, it's the per that's the purpose of this video. And um, it's, it's not only to show you what foods to eat, but which foods to avoid. So join me, Back Nick Bumps 2. So I visited two grocery store chains. As you can see, this one is the regular chain, but I also visited a Whole Foods, and you'll see pictures from that coming up. But all grocery stores pretty much have the same layout. The first thing you'll see are the fruits and the veggies, and uh, you can see from uh, this these images here, and you'll eventually run into the meats and the produce but all of this stuff that you see here eat as much as humanly possible um, lots of fiber lots of nutrients lots of vitamins uh, avocados that's the great fat but you'll see that every aisle will have all of these sort of processed foods whether you're in a grocery store chain or a regular type chain or any grocery store you'll see that they will have these aisles that basically comprised foods that are lightly processed to heavily processed. Now, these are the aisles, like, for example, the cereal aisles. You can see the vast amount of food in one aisle is cereal. But the first thing I do, as I say, is I go into the ingredients. I flip it over. And as you can see, many of them contain wheat, and that's what you want to avoid. A lot of them say whole wheat, whole grain, whole oats. These are words that are impressionable to us because we think they mean good. 
but um, if you have a food allergy, you, sh you should watch out for them. Now, these are the whole food images of cereal, and you can find other options that are gluten-free, but again, you still have to read the ingredients. Look at how the ingredient list is so much shorter on foods that are minimally processed. At some point, it's a cereal. It has to be processed. The raw materials, that is, have to be processed to make an actual cereal. But if you look at the ingredient list and it's paragraphs and words you can't even pronounce, look at this. There's a lot of stuff here. Now, there's a lot of ingredients in it, but the general rule is that the fewer ingredients, the better off you'll be. Um, now, don't be too concerned with the flashy claims on the cover. That's the marketing. But flip it over and look at what's in it. And you can actually count in some of these uh, brands the ingredients. Of course, bread sections stay away from all kinds of wheat, gluten. I mean, it's bread. If you were to make bread on your own, you would only need five or six ingredients. But look at this ingredient list. So all of these processed breads, even in your Whole Foods and even in your, your, your great quote-unquote organic, there's a lot of stores that are popping up. They're, they're, they'll, don't, they'll jump on the bandwagon and say they're green or organic. And this is my favorite place in Whole Foods because this is, this, this is like the treats in a sense. If you're going to eat grains but you're allergic to most grains, this is, they have their dedicated gluten-free stuff. And as you can see, look at how many ingredients. It's not a lot of ingredients. It's pretty simple. Now notice the consistent ingredients that pop up when something is and needs to be gluten-free. It's tapioca and whatnot. Generally, rices are okay, but it's better to have uh, a rice that is not has not been um, processed too much. That is to say, they'll take the rice and they'll strip away all the kernels and they'll strip away all its nutrients and then call it enriched. So they put nutrients back in, your basic vitamins, vitamin C and whatnot. Uh, again, pause the image to see what they've added in to call it enriched. But going with the brown rice is, is better because there, it's, it's not, it's minimally processed. So this aisle is a nice aisle, but um, as you can see, there's a lot of foods that I would avoid because um, the pastas are made from wheat. But lo and behold, there's a gluten option, which is nice for a regular store and not many ingredients. Quinoa is all the rage at this point. People are catching up to it and, you know, ingredients you can count on your hand. There's only so many. And would you look at this? The ingredients here, let's see, two. <laughs> we can almost say that's one ingredient for pasta because everything needs water to be processed at some point. So water is technically an obvious ingredient. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, you can even get your uh, mac and cheese on if you're if you're lucky enough to find a nice gluten free place. And you know it's it's getting better with uh, a lot of places they're catching up. And you know you can always order online if you really have that craving and you used to eat you know pastas and all this other stuff that had that was wheat and you're trying to sort of wean yourself off of it. You can order online. Now, uh, yeah, I used to eat a lot of pancakes, the famous uh, brands, but of course, read those ingredients. I can't even tell you what all the mono sodium glutamates are, but eat this. You could, these, these, this is the sort of eat this, not that. And you can see that there's another alternative to what you want to eat. So sorghum, brown rice, tapioca, these are the common gluten-free alternatives that you'll see um, on the packages. Compare that to bag of chips. My gosh, yellow, red, dyes, number fives. What is? What are these things? 
just grab a some regular chips. I mean, you know, and a lot of these chips you do have to watch out for because they're not dedicated gluten fat wheat free factories. But if you're willing to 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 investigate, you should. And of course, as we walk down the aisle, we we run into a lot of treats. These are non foods. Uh, as I say, this is not a, a a diet video. You know, again, feel free to pause during the ingredient close up to make a mental note on what ingredients are safe to avoid. Um, but this is a food allergy video. This is isn't a calorie counting or weight loss video. Just because you're eating gluten free doesn't mean you're automatically eating healthy. I need you to really focus on that. It's you know, you, just because you're eating gluten-free pizza and gluten-free cookies doesn't mean you're going to lose weight, doesn't mean you're going to feel healthier. It just means that you're not going to, your your skin and your whatever it is condition you have is not going to flare up. This also isn't a vegetarian or om versus omnivores video, meat versus plant eating diet video. This is just an allergy video. Those uh, topics uh, are left for other uh, vloggers and authors, but right now this this video is just concerned with uh, allergies. And, and eat all the nuts you want, um, as long as you're not allergic to peanuts and whatnot. Eat all the nuts you want. Uh, they'll fill you up. They'll give you good fiber. Um, and yeah, these are, you you'll see a lot of like tapioca starch. You'll see a lot of uh, treats, um, but beware of the sauces too. The sauces are where gluten and wheat sneak in. So I have a list of things in the first video that show where gluten kind of is masked as an AKA, also known as ingredients. So, so uh, review that list. If you have a sweet tooth, stevia has changed my life. Uh, I hope it's uh, not going to be like go the way of aspartame, but stevia is great if you can stomach the taste. Look at your regular brand in the frozen section. My gosh, the ingredient list goes on and on and on. I don't even know what some of these things are, but the point is that we should. Because if you put it in your body, your body's going to take that and it's going to do something with it. The frozen section is always a challenge, but there are some really cool things to eat if you can find a gluten-free. And of course, flip it over, look at the ingredients. You know, at the end of the day, your diet needs to be balanced by veggies. You know, of course, dining out can be a challenge too. So look for the GF gluten-free labeling on menus or ask for an ingredient list just to be sure. You know, just ask them. It's, it's a little bit of a pain. You know, you don't want to be that person who's persnickety and picky, uh, the one, the picky one at the table, but I've, I've gotten over it <laughs> and Restaurants are recognizing it because uh, people are also recognizing that they are intolerant. Of course, as I said in my first visit video, pizza is this is the brand I'm in love with. And you can see their ingredients. And not all the things that are actually prepared food that look healthy are free of the wicked gluten, as you can see. And in your meat sections, of course, you know, eat as much as you want in terms of being GF, but also recognize that there are issues with nitrates, antibiotics. I mean, there's so many bacons, but only one brand I found here is actually no antibiotics and no nitrates. So watch out for that. And even in a you know, big whole food chain, you can eat whatever you want. But again, watch out for the sauces because that's where gluten sneaks in. But I think at the end of the day, uh, listen to your body. You know, uh, we can eat as many treats as we want, like a nice cheesecake, which is very rare to find a gluten-free version. 